Ah, internships. The perfect excuse for a company to save some money while someone experienced is yelled as they try to learn what the hell to do. Or in this girl's case, be forced to kill some demons residing under her new workplace. But can someone really take a life for the sake of a job? Do you want body bags or should I just torch the building? Starting to see why I don't get a job anymore. Meet Jacqueline, or Jackie as others call her, as she starts her internship in marketing, only to have her employer manipulate her into doing a job she doesn't want. You know, this guy reminds me of my former boss. I didn't want to try and hurt him or anything, I have no idea what you're talking about. Stop showing that. Despite her reluctance, well, jobs aren't exactly easy to get without connections. The story itself is fairly entertaining, having some serious points later on, but is otherwise poking fun at the corporate life and making fun of it as you go around, bashing companies with similar functions to those in real life, like Joblin being a reference to Monster, or Cubicle clearly meant to be a dig at Amazon. None of it ever felt mean-spirited, and some of it was funny, especially the supporting cast. Hell, some actually hit me since I did know a coworker or two who acted in a similar manner, or I was that person. It helps that Jackie is a likable and understandable character too, and only becomes more enjoyable as the game goes on. There are three main dungeons you can run through, with two more available at certain points in the game, all with randomized rooms and floors. The level design, however, isn't quite as intimidating as you might expect, as each level is pretty linear, with any side stuff usually relating to getting more items and such. Now, Jackie's fisticuffs aren't too great, unless you get certain perks or make her binge on the legal drug known as coffee, so you have to use anything and everything not nailed down in the office to take care of foes. And each dungeon will provide a different set of weapons, like your spears, keyboards, guns, and of course, body pillows. Can can I get one of these aggro crab? I mean, for a friend. I'll settle for sexy pictures. Learning how each of these work is essential since, naturally, they don't all function the same. For example, the stapler has a limited arc and range compared to that of a handgun, or freezing enemies can let me use them as a weapon to slam them around like I'm Hulk and they are Loki, or setting things on fire... Well, I don't think that needs an explanation. The dungeons do repeat later on, but at the very least, new enemies and weapons are made available, along with upgraded bosses, so it doesn't feel like a one-to-one -one same exact experience. Interspersed with these dungeons are special jobs to gain extra items, which can range from just killing foes, collecting cryptocurrency, or even going on a date to assemble your own harem of destruction. There's two types of currency, blue, which I'll cover in a bit, and your standard green almighty dollar, which can be used to buy things in the shop. You're likely not going to have enough money to buy everything, so choose your upgrades wisely. This is especially important as healing items are very rare. Only one dungeon has an exception to the rule, which does involve collecting cryptocurrency. There's also this vampire who can offer multiple items at the cost of a curse, like increasing max health and a free weapon in exchange for enemies now exploding upon death. Apps are also in the game, which function like spells in a way. Some can lower the money in shops, provide distractions, give you a caffeine boost to raise your speed. You get the drill by now. And yes, there is a drill weapon in this game. Some can even be tie changers if you find the right one at the right time. And you gotta be quick about it since if you leave the room and come back later, the phone will be bricked. Though it can still be used to bludgeon demons to death. In order to make sure Jackie stands a chance against the literal monsters of capitalism, you have to gain skills spread throughout the dungeon. Should they get to 100%, they will be endorsed, and you can equip one before heading into the next dungeon. This is important as they are gained at random, and in some cases like being offered for free in certain areas, only one can be claimed from a group. By going into dungeons and gaining this blue currency, you can buy more to spread within the dungeon. However, you have to buy them all at the front desk before you can gain new ones, which can be seen as a blessing or a curse. Blessing, since you may still have perks you love and can get those more often. Curse, if you just want other abilities and don't want to grind in the dungeons. There are incentives to repeating these, however. Apart from learning how to play the game better, since it sure as hell ain't easy, you can complete quests to level up your mentors, each one capable of having up to four abilities. For example, Ray, the irresponsible owner of the company, allows you to use his credit card in stores to buy items you may not have enough cash for, though this means you will have a bullet chain in the form of your debt, which can oddly be weaponized. Not gonna lie, I'm very jealous of that. Or there's my bro Swamp, who can shoplift items for me and even help bring in some allies on every dungeon floor. That being said, don't count on the AI always surviving. I had some luck, like with demon waipus who could teleport and shoot fire, but everyone else rushed to their demise as they gangpile an enemy. Well, except the robots carrying packages, they just stand in the entranceway as a glorified paperweight. The only problem with mentorships is during the final level, where their usefulness kinda didn't exist. I felt like some abilities just didn't activate at all. The chaos, though... 
even with all the skills, can feel very overwhelming. With all the stuff I just went over, don't be surprised if you get blindsided often, or stuck in a room where everything is literally exploding thanks to all the dynamite. Unless you have the right weapon, rushing in is just a good way to get killed, especially in the final battle where I felt my eyes strain a bit. There may also be some glitches in some places. For instance, I took an elevator up to the next floor and I was suddenly here. I have no idea where I am, but hey, the site's pretty. The final verdict for going under is... Check it out. If you haven't played a roguelike game, this might actually be a good way to break into the series. Helping is that it has an assist mode to make things easier, and can even be toggled. AAA companies, take note of this, as I'm not paying 40 bucks for all the red orbs. I'm the smartest moron, and I need to figure out a new job approach. What do you think's better? I mean, Keyblade kind of says friendly, but a baseball bat... Hmm. I don't know, what do you guys think? Yes, this is a legit question, vote down in the comments.